finished reading over the materials, but to be honest, it tells me little. Most of the principles involved are already deceased, including Kuetsu Kirijo, Suji Kutsuki, and the Persona user whose abilities were artificially awakened. Still, I did learn something. The culprit's objective in Lovers' case had similarities to the purpose of Ergo Research. To deliberately gather shadows in order to fuse them together. If that was the objective, wouldn't the TV world have been an ideal place for a test run? It may be best if I check inside of the TV world once more. When I opened my cell phone to share my findings, scan till they may be, I noticed that the hours leave it almost the next day. It's a bit late to call them. Which reminds me, I think I heard thunder earlier. Could it have rained? That word, rains, give me pause. During the incidents with Labris, the Midnight Channel was broadcasting again. If her case is truly ongoing, does that mean it could become... Uh, does that mean it could come on tonight? A bad feeling crossed my mind. A call at this hour? From an unknown number. Hello. I got through. Miss Detective? Uh, wait, no. Now Tokun, right? That voice. Is that you, Labris? What's the matter? Listen up, because we got a big problem. Mitsura-san and the others were on their way to Inaba, but they've gone missing. Missing? So we were going to go look for them, but these weird guys came barging into the Shadow Operative's lab. I'm the only one who got out. What? Shadow Operative Research Lab was attacked? Could it be the enemy? No, that's not it. This is most likely... Lavers. Calm down. Can you describe anything unique about the people who invaded your headquarters? Unique? Um, they came in a big group, they wore suits, they showed this paper-looking thing, uh, and they said something about an investigation. Just as I thought, public safety. I had my suspicion, but there can be no mistake. So the Kirijo group and public safety are formally in cooperation? Public safety privately has a low opinion of the shadow operative. Hence, they request that I perform an undercover investigation. We must have found out about Mitsuru-san's disappearance and use it as an opportunity to launch a compulsory investigation. Mitsuru-san's disappearance? Could it really be related to public safety move? I researched a moment ago that Mitsuru-san and her people were headed to Inaba. Why? Well, I think carefully. Sorting through this new information, I asked Labris for more details. I understand. What's your present situation? I can't go back to the lab, right? Even if I could, I wouldn't know what to do without Mitsuru-san around. But then I found out the Shadow Operatives got these special folks who only get called up in emergencies. I just met up with them a minute ago, and we're about to go look for Mitsuru-san and them. Understood. I'll cooperate as well. I'm sure the others won't say no either. We'll all try searching for Mitsuru-san. Really? Thanks! Lavers, there's something else I'd like to ask. Why was Mitsuru-san headed for Inaba? If I remember right, they found a weird shadow reading over there, so they were gonna go look into it. A weird shadow reading? An abnormal shadow reading is detected in Inaba? And Mitsuru-san and her people go missing when they head out to investigate? Even if this is unrelated to the public safety matters, I can't overlook this detail. Mitsuru's son and her people are persona user and extremely skilled one at that. If they are in a situation with no means of contacting help, then whatever enemy they face must be formidable. And the first such enemy who comes to mind is the culprit who kidnapped robbers and forced us to fight in the P1 Grand Prix. She said the reading spiked all of a sudden. Did something happen over there? Hmm, nothing springs to mind. Oh, sorry, hold on a moment. Check the clock on the wall of the drawing room, it's almost midnight. If there was an abnormal shadows reading, the midnight channel could be involved. I need to find a room with a TV. I'm sorry, but let's continue this on the move. We should meet up at the very least. Actually, is that a helicopter I hear in the background? Yeah, I'm surprised you can tell. We have a maid piloting one right now! Maid piloting helicopter? A personal helicopter and maid piloting it? I never told my family as poor, but taking back to that limousine, 
the Kirijo clan seems to be a completely different level. Hmm. Let me think of a place where a helicopter could land around here. Ah, it's come back to red. As I continue to talk while walking down the hallway, all the light suddenly turns off. So it is midnight, this is a police station. There should be several officers still stationed here, even at this hour. However, in the violence of this fact, an unnatural stillness pervades the air. A blackout? No, that's not it. The roaring helicopter rotor on the other end of the line have also fallen silent. Labrys? My cell phone has gone dead. Ask if the batteries would drain. I tried a few things, but it won't even turn on. Have all the electronics have stopped working so suddenly? I open a nearby door to get a better look at my inferior men. The empty room is hazily lit by an eerie red glowing coming from the window. Walking to get a clearer view, a gap at the side outside. An obvious fall has fallen upon this quiet rural town. Red fog? Oh, there's a tower there? Like Tartar's Tower? Being the town involved in fog, I can't help but remember last year's kiss. With the foreboding feeling that the situation has taken a turn for the worse, I quickly leave the strangely empty Inaba station. I'm coming about the tower. Should we continue the game? Nice, nice. I really enjoy this. Okay, sudden phone call and find a clues. Thank <laughs> you. 